Hey everyone, it's Friday, January 15th, 2016. This is a special edition of Five on Fry, because I just don't have five things I want to talk about this week, and the things I do want to talk about are kind of serious, so... Enjoy? Okay, so before we get on to the really heavy, seriously sad stuff, uh, let's talk about something positive, because, uh, you know, sometimes life is hard, and you need to be uplifted before you're brought down. For the first time, since they started keeping track of things back in 1990, the percentage of the world's population living in extreme poverty is now less than 10%. Now, it still sucks that any percent lives in extreme poverty, but back in 1990, just 26 years ago, it was close to 40% of the world's population living in extreme poverty. I don't know about you, but I find this news extremely uplifting, especially given where my brain has been at lately, because I can recall being a kid, hearing about people living in poverty, people, you know, dealing with hunger in a very serious way, and thinking, well, I have all this stuff. Obviously, I was, I was never really a hungry kid. My parents struggled at certain points in my life, but, you know, they did a great job taking care of me. But in recent years I've been thinking about how it seems like our society, it seems like our, our culture really maybe isn't doing as much as we could to take care of everyone in the world. Maybe my perspective is warped because I work in entertainment and my day job is essentially to tell people what to do with their free time instead of being charitable or going out and giving back to your community. I'm constantly telling you, you can watch this, go see that movie, play this video game, these are the fun things you can do. And having fun is important in life. Maybe it's just that constant messaging of like, enjoy yourself, has been burdening my mentality because it isn't go out there and help people and you know now that I'm married and I feel very financially stable I, I think that's a big shift for me in my life I want to be doing more to help people and on that note let's talk about another subject Earlier this week, my fellow YouTuber and general awesome guy Matthew Santoro uploaded a video where he spoke about an abusive relationship that he had been in that he managed to escape. As he points out in the video, it is rare for men to come forward as the victims of spousal abuse, but it certainly does happen and men should not feel afraid to come forward and seek help when it is happening to them. In fact, though I wouldn't go as far as to label a previous relationship of mine as abusive, there were indeed a few instances many years ago where my partner hit me. And in the moment when she did, because of my previous actions, I felt like I deserved it. And it's only now with the benefit of hindsight that I realized that I wasn't holding my partner to the same standards that I would hold myself. The only reason that I would ever hit anyone was if, well, they were hitting me first and it was self-defense, or if I felt like I was being threatened and the only way that I could escape the situation was to you know, move someone out of the way. If a male friend of mine told me that he hit his girlfriend, there's nothing that he could tell me that she had done before that that would make me say, oh, well, in that case, she deserved it. So why should we hold women to different standards when it comes to abuse? We shouldn't. Nobody deserves to be abused. So no matter your age, your gender, or your orientation, if someone is abusing you either physically or mentally, be it at home or at work, tell someone. There are people out there who will listen, who will believe you, and who will help you. Finally, it was not a good week to be a 69-year-old iconic British artist cancer claiming both David Bowie and Alan Rickman. While I respected the talents of both of those guys immensely, aside from our mentions on Innerspace, the TV show that I host, I haven't updated any social media with pictures or comments because, well, everyone else has. It used to be that when someone passed away, it was really only the family that would comment publicly. You might see an obituary, or if someone was especially notable, you would see an item in the news about their death. But now, everyone everywhere is sharing their thoughts and reactions to the news of these icons passing away. And that's where you'll start to see strange exchanges where certain people will rush to point out the flaws of the people who recently passed away, and then other people will rush in and say, hey, hey, we're grieving, now's not the time to point out that they had done some bad things a long time ago. To be completely honest, I see value in both sides of the argument, and both sides are flawed. On one hand, it's true that talent doesn't make you exempt from criticism, nor does death. Like if someone ever tries to tell you, what about all the good things Hitler did? 
And on the other hand, criticizing someone who isn't around to defend themselves anymore is a very cowardly form of bullying. Suffice to say, in my 32 years, I have made some mistakes in the past, clearly. And I hope to live long enough to make a few more because making mistakes is all part of living. And when I do go, I hope that you'll all remember me for the good things I did with my time here, and not the few mistakes that I made along the way. On that note, thanks for watching. See you in the future, I hope.